Hey there, product launchers. Welcome to holiday in summer. And we're going to talk this week, um, the whole week, about holiday colors, seasonal strategies. And when we're talking holiday, I know we're close as we're recording this to Father's Day. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, you know, fourth quarter holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, you know, that New Year's, that whole holiday season, the whole gift giving season, if you want to look at it that way. And so that's what we're really talking about when we talk about holidays at retail, because you want to maximize every single dime you can get in that fourth quarter because it's the best time of year. It truly is the most wonderful time of year at retail. And so if you're in your uh, planning mode, we want to really give you tools to be thinking about what does that mean for holiday. And, and I'm starting it with color. That's today's topic. I'm starting with my favorite topic is to talk about color. Um, and, I'm talk and I'm starting with color because there is a um, concerted color trend that goes on every holiday season. And so whether that is, is like, oh, silvers are in and there's silver decorations everywhere. They're splashed around magazines. The store displays reflect that. Um, or hot pink accents are in this year. That was a couple of years ago. Anyway, but hot pink accents. And so when you get hot pink accents, um, you start seeing it everywhere. And so I like to call color forecasting, which is just the... Um, I hate to call it science and math, but it's the science and math about choosing colors for the next season. It's actually what I'm going to call a self-fulfilling prophecy. In other words, forecasters like Color Marketing Group and um, Color Trends and uh, there's a whole Color Council. There's a whole ton of them around the, the, around the world. And when they choose colors, they tend to happen. So that is exactly what we're talking about here is that it sort of happens because they said it was going to happen because there's a whole lot of people out there, you guys included, I know you were there, that are worried about picking colors, right? Part of you want to pick black and there's already a podcast and a blog post and a video cast and we did an office hours about this, about the 80-20 color rule. So we have, an, you know, that going on with that, the fact that there is that um, want to choose the thing that's in the 20% only. But the time that that defies is when you make a seasonal product, when you make a pot product that's specifically meant to be bought in the holiday season, whether it's a decor item, um, it's specifically an ornament for a tree, anything like that. That is something that you must get the color right because everything else is going to be in there. And if your color is like often, you know, in odd, and it just doesn't resonate with the person. So I might really like chartreuse green. It's my favorite color. And yet the color this year is a deep forest green. So buying chartreuse ornaments and buying chartreuse things may just not actually work for, um, and it won't sell as well. So that's some of the things that I've learned over time about color. So today I have for you my color trend report for holiday 2018. Now, this is a coup, guys, because I charge about five, six thousand dollars just to talk about color. I usually charge ten thousand dollars for just the holiday forecast, and I'm giving it to you. Now, keep in mind that if you were my client, I would have given this to you last October. Um, so you're a little late in it, but it's not too late if you're placing your last minute orders in July, which is why I'm hosting this week, because this is the last chance for those of you who have an existing product and maybe you're going to make it a new color. You're going to place your final orders. You're going to be starting thinking about scaling up your order inventory levels and making your purchase order decisions right now. This may be your last chance to do that in order to get a product in in October, you're making these decisions now and maybe there's something here that could be useful for you. So that's what I'm going to do. So I am going to share my screen and I really always can't stand the fact that it, it sort of does this. Um, okay. It's telling me share screen. Ah, here we go. PowerPoint. Here we go, guys. So I am going to put this in. Uh, presenter view, I guess. That's it. Oh no, that's definitely not it. 
that shows you guys the weird thing. So, oh, here we go. Do this way. Do it this way. There you go. Okay. So I am going to get rid of this menu. Um, so I don't see it and I do not need to see myself while I'm talking to you guys. So that just makes it more complicated. Okay. There we go. So holiday color trends, 2018. So I've set a little tone here by my cover. I am setting a minimalist style tone and that's exactly what we're going for this season. And as I go forward, I'll sort of clarify this and explain this a little bit more. Uh, move. It's not going. Why are we not moving? There we go. So let's talk about why study color trends. So Pantone, uh, Benjamin Moore, pretty much all the major paint companies, uh, color marketing group, as I pointed out, color council, all of them put out a color trend report and they put it out for all kinds of categories. So it's different for fashion than it is for home furnishings. Um, and it should be right. And, um, but I talk about it in terms of color trends. Okay. Colors can be really trendy. There can be something that comes in just for that season. It's temporary. And then it goes right back out again. But there are trends of the way color shifts. So is color getting more complex, which is actually what it is. So this is, um, uh, the, the color of the year is ultraviolet. This isn't actually ultraviolet here. Um, but ultraviolet is a variation on this purple, which was a couple of seasons ago. And per, uh, ultraviolet has shifted into being a really deep, rich galaxy black blue purple that has lots of uh, metallic in it. Why? Because our technology for applying colors and paint has changed. I mean, just think about how the color quality on cars has changed over time, right? Our, our ability to paint in specific types of finishes has changed, and that affects the color choices that we make as well. So that's part of why we study color trends um, the way that we do is because things are shifting and happening in that color palette, in that color family. But also, overall, we look at colors and we might see a shift of what's happening there as well. So, oops. so I look at lots of different companies when I talk about color trends. So I don't look at it in terms of um, just Pantone's offering or just color marketing groups. And I used to be a member. I haven't been a member in a while. Because I think that they, the way that they choose their colors and the way that it goes about it, it's a little bit of color by committee. And I don't love that. I like to have lots of external inputs. So you'll hear this a time and again when I talk about my research process for deter determining colors and design trends. And so um, I look all over the world, um, Rabu, Benjamin Moore. I look at what's going on in different marketplaces and industries because they all have a lot of money. To, it, to invest in their research, and they can't be wrong. Um, they have to get it right more often than they get it wrong. And so I really work hard to make sure and look at that and say, okay, overall, are the greens getting greener? Are they getting bluer? Are they getting yellower? Are they getting bluer? Are the reds getting hotter and brighter? Are they getting darker and more somber? And so really look at colors from that standpoint and see what's going on. And then I apply them to a holiday palette, obviously, because at the holiday season, there's going to be red and green, right? So you're always going to start with some kind of red and green, some kind of neutral whitish color of some kind. And so how does that look and how does that work? Um, so this is, um, if you look just at the color trends going on in the Amazon marketplace, you would think that this is going to be our Christmas look. This actually was last year's Christmas look more than it is this year's Christmas look. So you might be making wrong choices on trends um, and find yourself with a much more limited market. So if you brought in a lot of rose gold or this sort of pink tone that's going on, um, you wouldn't be totally off trend because obviously, you know, it's it's a bell curve kind of thing. So you'll catch a, you know, a bit of sales from doing that. So doing last year's is not the worst thing ever because there's a segment of the market that doesn't catch up to what the prevailing fashion trends, the fashion forward trends are going on. But at, at a limited buy time, when you walk into Target, Walmart, Costco, um, Bed Bath & Beyond, um, even Michael's and Joann's, and you walk into all those stores and you're not seeing rose gold anymore, you're seeing a different color, 
that's when people start to go, mm, I'm out of trend and should I buy that? And oh, is that going to last as long? So unless you're really just personally in love with rose gold and it's your favorite metal ever, you know, are you really going to do that? Um, and so you have the sort of peer pressure that goes on with color, with trends. So this is why I want to kind of bring this up to you because you don't, you would get it wrong if you just studied Pinterest. Um, if you just went off of what was going on on Amazon itself, because remember, we haven't seen what's coming in for this holiday yet onto Amazon. So it would give us a false sense of where we need to go. So this is what happens. That happy and bright is last year's Christmas card. This believe is actually, it's supposed to be an AR card. You'll, it, the card is like sparkly and the lights all change. It's not working in my PowerPoint. I couldn't get it to work. But and this is the idea. It's, it's a little more interactive. It's a little more dimensional. It's a little more, though, simplified. And so that's the, the prevailing trends that I see going on across things. We're going to talk about this type of stuff a little bit more in the design trends, which is coming up a little bit later this week. Um, I think it's Wednesday or Thursday. Thursday. So I'm going to talk about the design trend side of things on Thursday. So right now, though, what we're seeing is this sort of like less happy and bright kind of mentality and a much more of peace and serenity, believe. So every year, Tom and I do a 3D print um, angel ornament. I'm going to show them to you at the, on the design trend side. And every year we have a theme that we put on there and it's just a single word that's printed on the bottom of the ornament. And so we've done a peace one. We've done, um, uh, oh gosh, I can't even remember all of the different ones. We've done an inspire one. This year the theme is believe. Um, and so that's the, that when we set that tone, it sets a very different tone because that's a much deeper mentality then let's be joyous if joyous was our word or joyful rejoice we did rejoice one year so it's a little bit different than that believe sets a tone and so you're going to see that coming across because the design trends also have an in integral integral um relationship with the colors as well so um i do the two things hand in hand even though i'm separating them out for you here there's a lot of the thought process and a lot of that um, understanding built into it already so anyway we want to get to that place where the right product sells the right color sells more so 2017 trends that's what you're seeing over on the left i'm sure if you were shopping for products in china that's what you're going to see everywhere that's the color palette they're going to be presenting to you because they'll be presenting to you last year's they won't present to you new colors um, it happens very rarely so last year we had an overall somber tone a graying of the palettes across the year that cascaded into the fourth quarter um, and when it continued in the holidays, though, it sparked up a little bit and got a little bit more um, fun. And it happened in the form of these neutralized metallics. But you can see there's a little bit of aqua there. Um, the yellow gold has a little bit of green tint to it. Um, the grays are blue. So you ha see that happening. And so now the slide I showed you at the very beginning is starting to make a little bit sense. So we still have a little bit of that darkening and graying of the tone, but it's getting a little richer and a little deeper and a little clearer. And it's being offset with white, not neutrals, not like cream, uh, rose gold. It's not happening with those kind of neutrally colors, which you see as, as that's those sort of beigey metallic colors um, uh, for the ornaments on the left. Um, so anyway, we're moving also to longer seasonal use of color. So um, wanting to make the most out of your fourth quarter investment so that when you decorate your home or you do it for the holidays, you do it pre-Thanksgiving and it lasts all the way to New Year's, thinking about that as having a much more longer seasonal use and maybe not so Christmas focused. And so we're seeing a little bit of other colors creeping into the palette rather than just red and green. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. So this is the, the sort of trend tone that I'm sending for the color forecast for 2018 holiday. So are you ready to predict the future? Because remember, it really is a prediction. I could be wrong. I've been doing this for 25 years and I can tell you that I'm rarely wrong. Um, I, uh, I, my clients count on me to be right. So, so you're in good hands. I've been doing this a long time. This is not a guess. Um, and so it's the best guess though, or it's the most educated guess, the prediction 
that I can make based on everything I see going on, based on what's going on in the marketplace, it's based on what's going on with paint finishes and materials and all of these things. So this is the best I can do. So I am definitely better at seeing into the future than most. So here's our red. So velvetized red pair. That's what I'm calling it. Velvet, uh, red, red velvet pair. I think that's what I call it, <laughs> something like that. Anyway, deep red with purple undertones. And you can see that it's got this like depth going on. It's got a uh, lights and darks like velvet has. Um, it's got a little more natural quality to the red rather than that sort of artificial Christmassy red that we get where it's almost too bright and it's almost too odd. It just doesn't have the feel of anything we see in the natural world but this red does. And so that's where I'm projecting the red to go. And you can see it here because this is our red pear Pantone color. That's the color they've been using in fashion and other areas. And so it's a cascade of that, but metallicizing it a little bit. So we're bringing it a little brighter, a little cleaner, a little more fun. Um, and, uh, but we're keeping that same tone of it. So here you go. So how are you going to um, tell your factory that this is what you want? Well, you're going to give them this Pantone number. And for those of you who don't know what Pantone colors are, um, Google it. Um, Pantone is the prevailing body in creating color standards and ships. You can buy an entire Pantone library. You can buy a, a color wheel, color palette. They don't have always the newest colors on them um, when you buy the limited palette. I prefer to go with what is you see here is the TCX or the TXs, which is the textile color of it. Um, because I think it gives you a little more um, cross material look. So whether it's going to be in plastic or in metal or um, in fabric um, or in paint, is it going to give you this kind of color? I think it gives you the most grayish version of it. So the, the dirtiest version of it, if you might look at it that way, because it, it, when you put color into materials, it kind of absorbs it, right? When you paint it on the surface, it reflects it. Um, and so sometimes that shine gives us a false sense of what the color is actually going to be like in the products that we're choosing. So I like to go here or I like to use what they call UC or uncoated colors when I specify them and when I give them to my factories. Most factories have sets of Pantone colors or have access to re retrieve a chip, buy a single chip if they don't have it. You can do that too. You can go to Pantone directly. Um, you can buy color palettes online. Um, it doesn't really matter if you buy last year's palette because it just, just won't be highlighting these colors as trends, but typically the colors exist somewhere in the library um, or you can just buy a few separate ones like this year's palette. So anyway, that's where we're going with this. So our red is going into this deeper, darker, burgundy-ish red called Red Pear. And let's head into what look what our green is looking like. Our green is looking like what a, a black forest green. So it still has a little bit of that yellow undertone, but it also has a little bit of blue, depending on the light, depending on how it's looked at. But it's really deep and dark, and you see a lot of blacks and grays in the color. So you see it really, really deep, depending on the lighting. So we have both yellow and blue undertones at the same time. And I know that sounds odd, but obviously that's how green's made. But you, it's really dependent on how you treat the color how you're utilizing the color and when you metallicize a green you're able to get both things working for you and that's the real direction that I'm seeing going on with this color um, I don't have a Pantone specifically for this because I chose black forest green from Benjamin Moore as my flat line um, I'm sure um, that it exists out there in a Pantone ship as well um, I just haven't quite found the one I was looking for. Um, they have one that they, um, I, I don't think they call it forest green, but it's similar to that. Um, but it's a little bit yellower than uh, the black forest green from Benjamin Moore. Our other holiday trends, so remember I told you that we were going beyond red and green this year. Well, we're bringing in a lot of violet that ultra violet that is the Pantone color of the year um, for 2018, we're bringing it in in a little more rich tone, um, and that's why I'm calling it ultra velvet violet. Um, and it's got a lot more blue undertones into this purple um, that you'll be seeing. You can see that reflected sort of in that color with the dew drops and everything on it. Um, and then, but see over in the, in the bottom, area with those fingernails, what you're seeing is it mixed with the burgundy, right? And it's starting to really spark up and it's starting to really see how you might use purple almost like 
a, a neutral using purple like a black, right? And it's becoming part of that palette. Um, so yes, you can use it as an accent, but you can also be using it as sort of a neutralized in the palette. And we're going to talk a little bit more because that that uh, fingernail trend is a little bit of a hint at what's to come on the our design side. So as I mentioned, ultraviolet is the color Pantone color of the year. Um, that's that color number. You can see the richness that it's coming in the fruits and in what's going on in environmental kind of color, this galaxy kind of color. I mean, yes, maybe it's a little Star Wars based. Um, who knew what was influencing them to call it the color of the year at the time? There's what they say. And then there really is what's happening. But this was the way we were seeing color going, getting much more complex and much less flat in the overall process. And that's going to work really well for holiday 2018. So I also wanted to kind of show you this sort of gray with white and white with gray. So we're talking about really dark gray, almost charcoal gray. And that's kind of a really green gray over on the right hand side. So the white with, with a green gray that's going on and that's black forest gray in the background there on that tree. So you're starting to see this sort of like what happens when we, add, when we mix in white and instead of mixing just white this year, we're, at, we're bringing in grays. We're bringing in more grays again, just like there were last year, but the grays are getting a little bit richer. So we're gonna talk about those grays. Gray metallics is what we're really getting. So you can see up in the top a whole different slew of different charcoals and um, I call them graphite X because there's silvers mixed in there, but there are also like black chromes and other things that have been mixed into there. And you go all the way down from light to dark, from this darker graphite, almost black, to warm silver, which you're seeing in the bottom right corner in those votives. votives. Um, and you, you see that down there mixed with that cream color, which is not the trend. It's going much more white than this. The image doesn't, I didn't have one with white candles in it. Um, but you would see a much more concerted difference in where that warm silver has a much more silver sense. And it becomes much more of this bright light neutral when you blend it with the white. Um, so charcoal, this is Pantone's charcoal. I call it, I'm calling it graphite X because I think you can go even darker than that in tone. Um, but that's the, you can see it's a very blue gray. It's got a lot of blues and purples in that tone. Um, and that's going right along with the way that we sing the overall palette. So it fits right in. Um, whites, as you know, I was talking about those whites. They have a very silver and blue undertone again, less cream, more towards the silver gray. Um, and so we're seeing a lot of that shift right now in, in it. But, you know, with, with white, it's, uh, lighting as well. So it has a, an effect on everything that you do there. So pristine white is the color. I don't actually have a Pantone chip of it that looks any good because when I looked at it, it's the, the chip that shows up on the computer looks like a little ivory, but it's not. It has this really crisp white color. And so that's the pristine white is the color that I would use if you have to actually match to white, which most people do because there are millions of whites and white dust doesn't happen naturally. It's usually either the natural color of a material or it's bleached in to get to the color tone that it needs to be. So you should have a white chip. So again, this is the overall palette, kind of wanted to see it grouped together here. So we've got black forest and graphite and ultraviolet, uh, ultra velvet violet, red velvet pear, warm silver, and I'm calling the white, uh, the pristine white, white roses here. Um, the, the reason why that's coming in is that there was a trend for um, part of the Me Too movement for women to be carrying white roses at, um, at one of the awards ceremony in Hollywood. And we're seeing that sort of starkness between them all wearing black with white roses to seeing that starkness happen that's really where this white is coming into it. And you can see it, it sort of sets the tone for the, but it also kind of sparks the rest of the palette. So if it didn't have that color there, everything would be a lot grayer and darker and more somber. And it's that offset against the white that is sparking it. So make sure you get the white right. Um, and so oh, I'm going to escape. So anyway, so that's the palette. Um, I got to stop sharing. Here we go. There we go, back again. So anyway, so that's the color palette that I'm pr predicting for holiday 2018. And by holiday, we mean fourth quarter, not 4th of July, because that's coming up, <laughs> none of those things. So 
uh, Christmas, uh, Thanksgiving, New Year's, that whole holiday season. Um, and these are the colors that I'm predicting are going to, we're going to be seeing more of out in the marketplace. So you can check me out and see if I'm right this year. And maybe at the end of the year, we'll do a recap and see what happened, see if it was, uh, it was right. Um, and, uh, next year, um, I'll be giving you a little bit more towards the very end of the year, probably right at the start of January, I'll be giving you the forecast early next year because product launch hazards, what obviously didn't exist, um, this past January. So, um, at least not in this form for me to share the holiday trend color palette with you. So I, um, Hope that helps and helps you make some decisions. And as always, you can tune in to any office hours here on Product Launch Hazards. Um, you can reach out to me via email if you have questions about the palette. Um, the slide share will be up in the post. So you will have access to all of those images I just showed you. Um, so if you didn't get a chance to write the Pantones down, um, you'll be able to do that. Um, I ask that you're really, really kind be, and do not share that slide share with anyone who's not a member because this is a, a significant member benefit and you certainly want to have one up over your competitors so if you guys uh, share out um, this publicly and I always share it but after the season um, if you share it out too soon then you're gonna get a lot of copycats on you and you might end up with comp competition in your strategy so you want to use this like competitive intelligence that it is for your purposes and for you making smart choices as you head into making some final decisions about what you're going to be selling this holiday season what you're gonna sell to maximize your sales this fourth quarter of 2018 so thanks again and tune in next time to another office hours